26, 27. Whoa, 27 miles per hour, guys, and that's throttle only. We got another fast bike here. Hey, what's up guys? So you've seen that this bike is pretty quick right off the bat. This is a class three e-bike that we're gonna be looking at today. It's made by Vitalin or Vitalin. I don't even really know how you say it. A lot of these bikes I get, I never know how to pronounce the name and I probably butcher them all the time. But anyway, guys, we're gonna be going over this bike today. And down below in the description, I will put a coupon code. Now, if you end up purchasing this bike off of Amazon, there is currently a $250 off coupon on there. I'm hoping to get this video out there before the coupon expires. And as of now, my coupon expires at the end of this month, which is currently June of 2022. There might only be a few days left for the coupon once I post this video but I'll see what I can do about getting another coupon code after that or maybe they can give me a different one later on in the future whenever mine expires hopefully so let's go ahead and get into it guys now this like I said is a class 3 e-bike you can turn the speed down to a class 2 if you want to but make sure you guys check out your local laws and see what they are but this bike has a 48 volt 14.5 amp hour lithium battery powering a 750 watt motor with a 22 amp controller and they say it peaks out at about a thousand watts so we're going to be definitely testing that out on a hill test coming up a hill with just throttle only to see how it does up that plus a steeper hill that's in my town as you guys know if you watched my other videos the hills that i always go up to test these bikes out so one thing i want to show you right off the bat is it has the disland adjustable hydraulic disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotors on both the front and the rear of the bike. Now, I really, really love this style of brakes. I think these brakes are one of the, my favorites on the bikes just because of the ease of adjustability with your little thumb screw here to adjust the uh, distance on the brake pull there. And these rotors are super thick on this bike. Now, th maybe this will change over time. A lot of companies update their bikes all the time, but just keep in mind, this is as of me currently reviewing the sample model that they sent me. So. Like I said, they did send me the sample model. If you do use those affiliate links that I put down below in the description, I'll make a small commission at no extra cost to you. If you do use those, keep that in mind. Um, if it's on their website, I'm not sure. It's, it's not an affiliate link as of now, but the Amazon one will be. Just want to disclose that there. Now, what's unique about this bike and different than all my other bikes is this front suspension. It actually has an air suspension. You can remove this plug and put some air in the valve here. And on the fork itself, it gives you a little diagram. It shows you for how much you weigh, what pressure you should have in this shock. And I believe it said I should be somewhere around 120 pounds of pressure for my weight at around 160 pounds. So I'm not gonna mess with that. We're gonna leave it set at what it is because it seems pretty good. And over here on the right hand side, you do have a dowel with about five different clicks for adjustment on that. And then also a lockout. And like I said, this is an air fork and it says it's uh, maybe made by partner on here. So pretty nice front fork so far, guys. This is the first time I'm ever using an air fork. So it's gonna be a little different for me testing out. So far, it seems pretty close to the hydraulic ones that I've tested. And it does seem better than the, than the super cheap, just spring suspensions in the front for sure. And this bike also has a rear suspension. It has a 1000 pound rear shock here and it works really well. Now this suspension system on here is the same system that I had on the Engway Engine Pro, if you guys seen that review video. And when I got that bike, the suspension didn't really work good on it and it squeaked real bad and, and wasn't really cushiony. And if you guys watched that video, you'll notice that I had to take all the linkage apart, adjust the washers and put it back together. And then it worked fine after that. So I was kind of expecting to have to do that to this bike. However, I was really surprised that when I put the bike together, which was very easy and, and simple to do. There wasn't much assembly on the bike, but I got on it, tested out the suspension, which I know all of you are gonna do for the first thing. As soon as you put the bike together, you're gonna sit on it and bounce around and see how that suspension is. But this suspension was perfect right out of the box. Didn't have to do any adjustments, no squeaks or anything in the back. So that was a plus for this bike. So let's look at some of the other features on this bike before we get into the rad test. So up here on the handlebars, on the left-hand side, you have a thumb throttle. Then you have your control pad for co controlling your pedal assist levels. You have the black and white LCD screen in the center that displays your speed, your trip, odometer, max speed, average speed, and amp hours that the battery is outputting. That would have been nice to see a wattage output instead of an amp hour, but that's okay. At least it shows you that. They give you a really cheap bell, which I moved from the left to the right side because I like it here better. And they give you an eight speed trigger shifter 
that leads down to the 13 to 28 free wheel in the back so that's a nice setup there versus the 14 to 28 that comes on most bikes it gives you one extra gear with the 13 tooth gear for higher speeds and it has a pretty nice shimano altis derailleur leading up the chain to the 52 tooth chain ring in the front and it has a set of folding aluminum pedals now this is a folding bike you can fold it in half and remove the battery that's inside the frame tube here and it folds up pretty small nice and compact for ease of transportation in back of your trunk of your vehicle or in back of a truck or anywhere you want to move it now these folding e-bikes are still pretty heavy this one weighs in at 72 pounds so they still are a little bit hard to maneuver once they're folded up so just keep that in mind but it is nice to have the option to fold it to put it in small spaces or for storage so now on the back of the bike you have a nice heavy duty steel rack and then on the seat height on their website it states that it goes up something crazy like 48 or 43 inches or something but what's awesome is the minimum seat height on this bike is actually pretty low lower than most of my other bikes at around 29 and a half to 30 inches for the minimum seat height from the ground up and then it goes up to about 38 inches and then you have five inches of adjustability on the handlebar stem as well to accommodate different size riders but my wife's 5'3 she could stand over the seat no problem flat footed and still has room so really awesome for shorter riders on this bike now one thing about that though is the handlebars are a straight bar they don't have any rise on them so you won't be able to get the handlebars back closer by rolling them so that's one thing to keep in mind is the handlebar reach but really really nice that the seat height goes down that low to 29 and a half inches has a really nice adjustable heavy duty kickstand on the back and a set of plastic fenders on both the front and the rear which is really nice they won't rust and really quiet if rocks hit up in there now i would have liked to have seen this back fender maybe come down just a little bit further because i'm a little concerned if it was wet the water still might come up past this onto your rack but maybe maybe not i don't normally ride in the rain but it just seems like this may have been nicer to have like another inch or two on it and coming down the front of the bike we have a few different wraps coming down the front for the wiring Oh, they did a pretty good job on that not too bad it routes underneath the frame here everything looks pretty clean so not bad at all you have a really nice latch on the handlebars for folding them down i really like the latching system on this the way that it clamps and this bike's sitting on a pair of cst bft four inch fat tires on a set of pretty nice looking mag rims so you won't have to worry about adjusting spokes on this bike because the bag rims, even though they do usually add a little bit of weight to the bike, are nice that you don't have to adjust spokes over time. So for safety guys, you got a pretty nice little dual beam headlight in the front and you have a really nice brake light in the rear. When you pull the brake, it gets brighter. And when you don't have the lights on and you pull the brake, it lights up as well. So really, really nice safety feature having that brake light there. So this model guys is the Vitalin i7 by the way. I think I forgot to mention the i7 earlier. And on this chain ring, it does have a single sided aluminum chain guard. Usually I like to see a double sided plastic one there. The aluminum one looks nice, but the plastic one is usually a little quieter and it usually is nice having one on the inside so your chain can't jump off. And I normally don't have a problem with a single sided one, but it is just nice to have a double sided one sometimes. So now I think that's most of the main specs that I think you guys should know about on this bike. But without further ado guys, let's get into the ride test test out this power speed and a bunch of different things and see how the bike performs thanks for watching guys and if you like this content after watching this rest of this video please make sure you guys stick around and subscribe i got a lot of awesome videos coming up in the future all right guys here we go throttle only up this hill see what kind of power it has now the throttle is limited to the pas level so you have to be in pas level five to have the max throttle so far so good guys 16 miles an hour at the end of this guardrail 12 man lots of power guys right up this not a problem at 11 miles per hour that's really good guys really good power didn't pedal at all 25 just throttle still only throttle guys 25 i got a little bit of a headwind 24 and that's full throttle so i had a little headwind i got up to about 25 miles per hour there you can see the brakes no squeaks or squeals pretty nice never had an issue with this style brake before and like i said it's one of my favorites so i'm going to do a lot of throttle today i'm not going to pedal much 
just so we could see what the battery is going to be at when we get back for mileage. I'm not quite sure how many miles I'm going to ride today, but I started with a full charge. We're at about 54 volts, so we'll see where we're at at the end. Alright guys, so I decided to take a pretty long ride out through the country. So far, I'm at 7.6 miles on my GPS, and I've pretty much been just going throttle only on all level ground, and then just helping just slightly on the uphills like this right here. And this bike's been running pretty good, guys. It seems to have good power. Now, I did notice the motor seemed a little louder than some of my other bikes, but then again, it also has more power than a lot of my other bikes as well. Uh, not so much when you're full throttle, but if you're just limiting the throttle a little bit, I don't think it's anything bad. Just something I noticed. Seems to run good. See, it's pretty quiet there. Full throttle. 26, 27, this is slight downhill now. Back uphill slightly here. We'll see what we can maintain up this little incline here. 26, 27, it's really windy guys. I hope you can hear me. This is uphill slightly, throttle only. 24, 23. And almost at my brother's house. Wonder if he's home. I don't think so. All right, guys, so I'm 12 and a half miles into this trip. So far, so good. So one thing I wanted to show you is that this bike also has cruise control, very similar to the uh, G-Force bike that I reviewed. So all you do is hold down the plus button for a few seconds, and then you'll see a little heart come up on the screen. And then all you have to do is hold your throttle steady for right around five, six seconds, something like that, and it will engage cruise control. Now, once you're in cruise control, you can shift up through your pedal assist levels and your speed will increase with your pedals. But if you quit pedaling, it will maintain the original speed you set it at. To disable it, all you have to do is pull a brake lever or hit the throttle and it will disable the cruise. So really nice feature. I love the way that uh, cruise control is set up on this bike. And it also has a walk mode by holding the down button down in case you had to get off and walk it up a hill. But to me guys, this bike seemed to have enough power to get up any hill so far and I've pretty much been in gear eight the whole time. Like I said, I've been using throttle only most of the time and then just pedaling slightly uh, once I get to some hills. That's what I always recommend no matter what bike you have, what kind of power it has, I would recommend help pedaling up hills. That way you save some battery life and also prevent wear and tear on your controller, your motor from overheating and things like that. So. A little bit of power of your own goes a long way. Uh, even if you don't put a lot of effort in, just that little bit helps out a lot. So we're gonna keep going here. We're, we'll see how many miles we get on it. By the time I get back to my house, I'm currently showing two battery bars on the display out of, I believe, five. I doubt you guys can see that. Just cruising here. But I'll throw a voltmeter on it when I get back and see what voltage is that it's at and hopefully I have enough battery to get back home. So 13 miles so far. Usually on like a 10 amp hour battery, I'll get maybe around 18 to 20 miles on it around here through the country and stuff. And that's pedaling a good bit. You know what I mean? Like I would a normal bike because I do like to get exercise normally, but I wanted to push this battery a little bit being that it's 14 and a half amp hours and just see what it can do. And uh, I'm not gonna run it until it drains completely because this isn't really a proper range test anyway with all the wind that there is today. It's super windy here, guys. Uh, maybe in, in the future I'll do one. On a bike trail on level ground, you'll get tons of range out of this bike probably because on a 10.4 amp hour battery, I got 37 miles on the bike trail on my electric. So with 14 and a half amp hours, it should go way further than that. But you guys can go watch that video if you want. It was my electric uh, furthest, furthest ride on one battery charge or something like that. It's been a while since I made it, but me and my buddy went out on the bike trail. So go check it out. It was a pretty cool video. So I'll see you guys here in a little bit once we get down to a straight stretch. Well, actually, we're on a pretty good one now. So let's test out this uh, max speed. Dog scared the crap out of me. All right, guys, throttle only, 27, 28, 
29, 28, 29. So hovering around 28 to 29, 31 on the display. So uh, there we go, 30 miles an hour. This is very, very minimal decline. So you might be able to hit 30, but it's probably not gonna maintain that very well. This is a slight downhill, but I would say, safe to say throughout my ride, I've seen a very easy 24 mile an hour that you can maintain 24 to 25 with an occasional, you know, 27 to 30, depending on if it's level, a long straight stretch, slight downhill. But the main thing is guys, good power. So even when you hit those hills and you're hitting 24 mile an hour and then you hit a hill, you still maintain pretty decent speed when you hit those hills because of the power of the 750 watt motor on this bike and that was throttle only guys normally bikes cap out at 20 miles per hour for it to be legal with throttle and then you can usually hit like 28 on a class 3 bike with just pedaling but still only uh 20 with throttle this bike it let they let you do the full speed with throttle or with pedaling so that's that's pretty nice in my opinion not quite sure how legal that is but <laughs> pretty nice when you're riding this is pedaling 28 29 slight decline so pretty much the same pedaling or throttle all right guys we're just going to cruise a little bit i'll see you in a little bit when we get to some curbs try that front suspension and then we'll test it out on a steeper hill all right guys so we're going to do a throttle or uh suspension test up here I just stopped by my buddy's house. He was out and he took a ride on his bike. He loves it. He's gonna come up and ride some more. He's thinking about getting one. But uh, let's try this suspension out here. Like I said, this has front and rear dual suspension. So let's try to go pretty slow off this curb. And there's the front, there's the rear. Pretty nice guys. Let's hit it a few more times. And that was about a six inch curb. Let's go up and down it a few times. Pretty nice, guys. Now, if you want it even softer, you can put a suspension seat post in the back, something like the red shift that I have, or, I mean, really don't need it, but it would make it a little bit smoother on the back. The seat is a little hard, so I'll probably be upgrading that, but the suspension itself, guys, pretty nice. Like I said, no squeaks or squills in that rear suspension. This is right out of the box. You can actually hear that air in the front as it, the front's working going through i don't know if it's a valve or what but really nice guys really nice and this is about a four inch curb all right let's head up to the big hill all right guys here we go up the steepest hill in my town let's do a little bit of throttle only until it's dying down and this is with 18.9 miles already on this battery charge guys holy cow it's pulling me up this hill with no problem with just throttle only guys i always pedal up this hill let's do a little bit of throttle only until it's dying down and this is with 18.9 miles already on this battery charge guys holy cow it's pulling me up this hill with no problem with just throttle only guys i always pedal up this hill now, I don't recommend really doing that. You should help it out a little bit, but man, it just pulled me up that hill. No problem, throttle only after almost 19 miles on this battery charge after going 19 miles. That is amazing, guys. So we got one more hill to go up. It's a long one, so let's head up to that one and see how it performs going up that long hill. Awesome, guys. All right guys, last long hill before my house. We're gonna just do some throttle only here first at the bottom. Now I'm in pedal assist two and it's putting out 17 amps. I'm in eighth gear. I'm gonna start pedaling here. Let me bump it up into pedal assist three. Now it's putting out 21 amps, 21.3. I'm in still in gear eight guys, which is crazy. This is the highest gear, um, the, the least basically the least mechanical advantage that i could possibly give it um, if i wanted to go into gear one i could spin the pedals a lot faster and give it a little bit more mechanical advantage and help it out even more which is normally what i recommend on hills but i just want to show you guys that it's pulling me right up this hill even in gear eight you can tell i'm not out of breath not working hard whatsoever i'm in pedal assist three 
16 amps of power right now. It's starting to level off a little bit. And I don't know if you guys can see how steep this hill is or not. It's not too, too bad, but I did come from way down there up this hill. <laughs> so very, very easy, guys. Very, very nice. 20 amps of current now. Bumped it up in the pedal assist 5, 21 amps, 21.3. So yeah, guys, definitely outputting at least 21 to 22 amps of current, which is really nice to see because it does have a 22 amp controller, like I said earlier. And I just hit 20.41 miles, and we'll see what kind of battery voltage we have when we get back to the house. All right, everyone, we're approaching the hill that we started at at the beginning of this video. So let's see if we can make it up throttle only. I'm pretty sure it's going to. I'm down to one battery bar. 20.87 miles in. Still pull me up, no problem at all. This right here is about where the electric stopped. And nine miles an hour still up that hill, not an issue guys, right up it. Awesome power, even after about 21 miles on the battery. You can see their cruise control engaged because I had cruise set and now I'm in cruise control. So to disable that, you either hit the throttle, like I said, hit a brake, and it will disable. All right, guys, let's try it up this steep grassy hill that I've done in some of my other videos and see how it goes up this. I'm in gear eight. Okay, it was a little tough in gear eight on that, but guys, that's almost 22 miles in. This battery's getting down pretty low probably and still walked me up that no problem let's try it in gear one now and see how easy it is I was very surprised that just pulled me up in gear eight I thought I was gonna have to zigzag or go up sideways or or something <laughs> this hill is pretty steep guys all right now that I'm in gear one let's try this again No problem, right up it guys. A little bit of pedaling and gear one to help it out and it walked right up that. No problems at all. Very impressive. All right guys, I don't know how this is gonna go with one hand, but trying it one handed up this. <laughs> one handed guys. That's the third time in a row up that hill easily. All right guys, so I'm just cruising around here throttle only for a little bit trying to hit about 25 miles and I'm probably going to call it quits but there is something I want to show you really quick and the reason why I didn't go through each pedal assist level is because you could change it you could change it from one to zero to three levels zero to five zero to seven zero to nine so you could put this bike up to nine different levels of pedal assist if you want and you could also adjust each level of pedal assist for the power output that you want which is really nice to match other bike speeds. And I'm gonna show you really quickly here how to do that before we end this video. So make sure you guys stick around. All right, so I just made it back home and guys, this bike did not disappoint. The speed's awesome, the power's awesome, and we ended with a 25.38 mile trip. I'm on one battery bar level there. We're gonna check the voltage here in a minute, and 26 miles on the bike. So the bike's reading slightly higher, but not much, because in a 25.38 mile trip on GPS, it's only reading about 0.42 miles higher on here, so pretty close. The tire size is set at 23. The speedometers have been pretty close, maybe a mile per hour or two reading more on this. So you might want to bump that tire size down to 22. Maybe it'll get it more accurate, maybe it won't. That's something you guys can play with. But I'll show you how to go in and adjust the pedal assist levels. You hold the plus and minus button down for a few seconds. That'll put you into where it says TC. And TC is where you can clear your trip. So to clear your trip, you just push the side info button. That'll take you into the trip. 
Then you push the up button till it says Y for yes. And then you push the info button again, which is the top button on the right hand side and hold it. That'll take you back to the main menu and you can see now the trip is cleared. So to adjust your pedal assist levels, you hit the plus and minus button. That takes you to trip clear. You hit the plus and minus button again. That takes you into where it says VOL. That's so you can adjust your voltage uh, up here on the display for what it displays. You hit the up button until it says SCA, which are your pedal assist levels. Then you hit that info button again to get into there. And you can see it's set at zero to five. Now you could change that, like I said, from zero to three, all the way up to zero to nine if you want nine different levels of assist. We're gonna keep it at zero to five. Hit the info button, and then it will take you into each level of assist. This is currently what mine's set at. One is at 25, two is at 37, three is at 50, four is at 75, and five is at 100. Once you get those set, you just hold the info button down and it will take you back to the home screen. So very easy adjustability there, guys. You can adjust each pedal assist level to whatever power output you want and whatever speed you want, which is really nice. And you can also go in and bump your speed down to make it a class two e-bike to make it legal. That's up to you guys. Uh, very easy to do, but it is nice that they do give you that adjustability there. I believe you can adjust it all the way down to like 13 miles per hour, I think I've seen for the max speed. If you take the uh, kilometer per hour setting all the way down, that way if you had a young teenager or something riding the bike, you could adjust it all the way down to that and then they won't be able to go over 13 miles an hour. So that's pretty sweet, guys. And like I said, if uh, you want to pick one of these up, I'll leave affiliate links down below. Make sure you guys check those out and don't forget to use any current coupon codes that I put down there to save you some money. And let's check the voltage on this bike real quick. All right, so we're sitting at 45.5 volts. All right guys, so that's about 40% battery life left. Normally I don't like draining it down below 20%. So I would say I had roughly around 20% or so battery left to use in this bike. Now with me going up all those hills and using mostly throttle only on this whole trip, I did pedal a little bit up them hills, but most of them hills that I normally pedal up, I put a lot less effort into it on this bike just to give that battery a workout. And many of them I came up with just throttle only, even the steepest hill in my town, which was pretty insane. So I did not expect that after having that many miles on this battery charge for it to come up that. But let me know what you guys thought down below. Please leave a comment and let me know what you think about this bike or other bikes or anything really, because all those comments help my channel out and helps YouTube promote my videos. I really appreciate it guys. If you found it helpful, please hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing so that I will see you around on the next one. Whew.